Hey fish friends, Zenzo with Tozawa Tanks, back with another video. So how's everyone doing today? Hope you're doing well. I just wanted to uh, talk about something that's been kind of on my mind for a while. I made a video about this, uh, I don't know, maybe three or four months ago or maybe longer, I don't remember. Um, and it was kind of on the subject about where you get your advice. So I thought I'd talk about it again since it's been kind of bugging me and I thought I'd share it with you guys and I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. So the subject is where you get your advice. And uh, so I, I made a video before that kind of questioned, you know, where people get their advice. But uh, for me, it's really uh, stemmed around Facebook. Facebook is a great platform for a lot of uh, information sharing, a lot of networking. Obviously, it's a social network. Um, and there's a lot of great things about Facebook. Facebook. There's a lot of great Facebook groups that I'm part of, some in the aquarium hobby and some in other hobbies as well. But uh, what I've noticed in, um, I've been noticing for quite some time, but I've it's been kind of uh, increasing in uh, uh, kind of occurrence is the misinformation that's been given in Facebook, um, specifically Facebook groups. So, you know, there are, there are a lot of Facebook groups out there that are related to fish keeping, the aquarium hobby, both for freshwater and um, you know saltwater and reef, as well as kind of specialty um, kind of segments. So maybe like it's uh, something that has to do specifically with freshwater planted tanks or cichlid tanks and things like that. But um, what I've noticed, and I'm and I'm part of a lot of these groups, and, and uh, I you know I look at a lot of the comments on there, and every once in a while I will answer a question if I feel like. You know, someone's asked a question and they haven't gotten a good answer. And then I'll try to, you know, share a little bit of wisdom or just, you know, my experiences and hopefully help them out. Uh, but what I've noticed is there are a lot of people that give bad advice on Facebook. So if you are a newer fish keeper, um, if you are, you know, maybe like... Um, maybe like a novice at uh, keeping fish, then I would recommend you to be very cautious when it comes to where you get your information and whom you get it from. So um, in my previous video, I did talk about uh, a lot of expertise that you can find at local fish stores, um, obviously from um, your local fish club or aquarium society. There's a lot of great knowledge um, from people that have been keeping fish for decades and decades um, that you can get information from. Obviously, there are some you know very knowledgeable YouTubers um, that also have a lot of good information. That's where I get a lot of my information from, uh, of course, as well, um, along with those other uh, those other areas that I talked about as far as like, you know, the old grizzled local fish store uh, fish keeper uh, and, um, you know, talking to him, him or her and getting their insight on something. Um, and also as well as from the aquarium clubs and things like that. But when it comes to Facebook, and I'm specifically talking about Facebook, there is a lot of misinformation and I think it's just kind of the format and the way that Facebook is and it's very easy for people to respond. Um, everyone will see a question and kind of jump on it and give their own two cents. Um, and also the other thing that really now, I'm not going to say it bothers me, but something that I would caution uh, people on is, um, you know, jumping on the bandwagon and uh, thinking that something's bad just because somebody else said so. So as an example, I'll talk about betta fish. So um, betta fish, and I keep betta fish. I have a betta in a 16 gallon. I got a betta in a 10 gallon here. I've got one upstairs in a 10 gallon. And I typically keep bettas in um, smaller tanks, uh, even down to like a five gallon tank. I've got a five gallon tank upstairs that I have had a betta in before. It's a planted tank. And I probably will do a betta again in the future in that tank as well. But a lot of times you'll see uh, people kind of jumping on um, someone commenting about, oh, you have a betta in a one gallon container that's terrible, or you have a betta in a two gallon container that's too small. They need a 10 gallon tank or more. And then what will happen is everyone else will start piling on to the comments and uh, you know, I think the original poster sometimes will feel really bad about posting something um, about their betta fish and it really kind of deters them from asking further questions and for them to learn more about the hobby. Um, and talking about betta fish, you know, there are a lot of amazing uh, betta keepers and betta breeders. Um, there are a lot of uh, wonderful YouTube channels out there where those betta keepers are actually keeping the bettas in smaller containers. Um, so I would say if you have an expert who's you know, very knowledgeable about bettas and all the different types of, uh, you know, breeds of, of betta splendens and, and um, you know, is very in, you know, in tune to breeding and, and, and the foods and things like that. If they are successful in keeping them in smaller containers that aren't 10 gallon tanks, 
then I would say that it can be done. It doesn't mean that everybody should keep a Ben in a one gallon container or a two gallon container, but it does mean that it can be done if done properly. So um, sometimes when you go onto Facebook and you see a comment like that and someone says it shouldn't be in anything smaller than a five gallon or a 10 gallon, you know, again, take it with a grain of salt. The other thing uh, that I often see in Facebook and kind of getting back to the, the misinformation is when you have a lot of people commenting on, on a question or on a post that someone um, you know puts on Facebook. And a lot of times, you know, a lot of the people that are responding aren't necessarily expert fish keepers. They are just, you know, someone that happens to keep fish or someone that's part of that Facebook group and, uh, you know, believes that they have the right answer or they have the knowledge and they will give advice or respond to something, but oftentimes it's incorrect information. So um, instead of, you know, getting into any kind of debate on Facebook, which I really don't do, um, I'll just kind of sit back and look at it. And sometimes I'll send that person a direct message and say, hey, you know, I saw that you put this post on Facebook and there's, you know, you had a hundred responses and, you know, there's only two or three that I would advise you to kind of follow up on. And here's, you know, kind of you know, my take on your situation. And I would definitely encourage you to do some more research. And here are some resources and some avenues that you can research. That would be kind of my response to them. Um, and I don't really respond in in those groups when it kind of comes, uh, when, it, when it gets kind of not combative, but uh, adversarial or, you know, someone's taking a hard stance on something and I, and I know it's incorrect or I believe to be that it's incorrect information. I don't, I don't go down that rabbit hole. I just kind of let it go. Um, it's kind of senseless to get into any kind of debate on Facebook unless it's someone that you know, and then you can talk to them and say, Hey, let's, you know, debate about this. So um, again, you know, Facebook is really good when it comes to um, getting information um, kind of generally, and it's great as far as networking and learning more about the hobby. Um, but oftentimes the information that you get can be less than helpful. So I really would say, um, unless you know who the person is that is responding, not necessarily that you know them personally, but you know kind of their history or you, you um, uh, not that you know their resume, but you, you know who they are and, and can understand that they are an experienced fish keeper, that they've been doing it for a long time and that they're giving you sound advice that's gonna help you. I would steer you towards those comments and uh, definitely, um, uh, again, caution you on you know, all the 1,500 other comments and, and uh, rebuttals that you're getting on your post. So there's a lot of Facebook groups out there. There are a couple of really good resources, and I'll, and I'll just mention one off the top of my head here, and uh, that is the Aquarium Group Support uh, Facebook group page. I think that's a name, don't quote me on it, but I will put the actual group name down here below. And uh, that's Aquarium Co-op's uh, Facebook group page. And really it's, um, it's geared towards helping people. So if someone has a question, it's kind of a safe environment to ask a question without fear of you know, getting harassed and harried. Um, it's something where it's a page where um, there are multiple um, admins that are monitoring it uh, very closely. So there are staff, um, both Aquarium Co-op staff as well as some other admins um, that are watching that group page to ensure that you know people are posting the appropriate you know posts and they're not you know selling things and spamming uh, like their own YouTube videos. I don't put my own YouTube videos on there as an example because that would be kind of spamming. Um, but uh, you do have staff and admins that are monitoring that group page, making sure that it's that it's quality um, questions and content that is that is being posted on there, and that the responses and answers to those questions are very helpful. So that someone shouldn't be fearful about saying, "Hey, I have five goldfish in a you know 29 gallon tank. What do I do?" Instead of you know, a hundred people piling on this person and saying, you're a terrible person, you're a terrible fish keeper, your fish are going to get a foot long, they're all going to die. What are you doing? Instead of that type of environment, you know, it's someone or a few people that are saying, hey, that's not really ideal. Um, but, you know, from what you're asking, here are some solutions and here are some, some ways of going about, you know, addressing your situation. So um, it's very helpful, it's very constructive, and uh, it's a very well managed and monitored um, Facebook group page. And there are others like that. I know that uh, Ben Ochart has a really good one when it comes to African cichlids. It's a smaller group. So um, again, you know, if you are um, not wanting to uh, put a question out there where you know there's just gonna be 50,000 other group members that are gonna ridicule you because, you know, you didn't 
build your stand properly or you have the wrong lighting on your planted tank, um, that's another safe environment. So um, anyway, I would just, again, just say that there's a lot of great um, Facebook group pages out there. So I don't want to really um, knock on any and I refuse and I won't do that. I'm not going to put, not going to call anybody out. But what I will say is my experience is some of the smaller to middle size Facebook group pages tend to be better monitored. Um, and uh, anytime you have someone who's an active admin and is very responsive and in, in, uh, addressing situations where something's getting out of hand, uh, then I would say that that's a good start. And then definitely, again, make sure that the information that you're getting is good information. So that's all I have for now. I just wanted to kind of share that with you guys. Before I go, I did want to mention that we still have the uh, contest running. So um, that is the uh, big Tazawa Tanks uh, subscriber giveaway. The way to be a winner or the way to be eligible for that is to be a subscriber to this channel and also to follow me on Instagram. So um, I will put my Instagram uh, page right here so you can see it's uh, Tazawa underscore or tanks on Instagram, of course, here on YouTube at uh, Tazawa Tanks. And uh, let's see, I do have my website coming up, so uh, that will be kind of unveiled in the future. Some of you had commented about uh, maybe my contest being a little unfair because not everybody's on Instagram, and I understand that. Um, but I did want to uh, kind of um, put a little bit of a stipulation on this uh, on this uh, subscriber giveaway and contest because it is a larger investment for me. I'm, I'm kind of factoring in that it's going to cost me right around four hundred dollars to. Um, provide this uh, provide the winner with their uh, winnings so between the hotel voucher for uh, their stay in san francisco and tickets to the academy and dinner or lunch or whatever we do um, it's going to cost me right around 400 bucks or so so um, i hope you understand i apologize if you feel it's unfair but uh Again, Instagram is really easy. You don't even have to post any pictures. You don't even have to post a profile picture. You can just have a generic, you know, Billy Joe loves fish, and that can be your Instagram handle. You don't have to put a picture on there. You don't have to post anything. You can just follow people. You can say, hey, I want to follow Tozawa Tanks, and I want to follow Backyard Aquatics and Sashimi Whiskey and Corvus Oskin and whatever it is, so that you can then um, – Follow those people and still see what they are posting without having to feel like you have to, you know, put your own information out there. And I understand that uh, sometimes people are kind of leery of social media and don't want to put, you know, put information out there. But it is a very uh, easy way to follow somebody and be anonymous. So that's all I have for now. Again, subscribe, like this video, hit that notification bell. We'll catch you on the next one.